Hello, Hester Goodman, Ukulele Orchestra of Great Britain, reporting for duty. It's a rainy afternoon in Dorset and what better way to spend it than with you. What's that you say? You'd like to see my ukulele collection? Of course, why not? I happen to have some of it here in front of me. I say some of it actually because like most people who play ukuleles, um, early on I developed um, quite a bad case of UAS, ukulele acquisition syndrome, which I believe the term was coined by George uh, a while ago, um, as we all seem to be doing it. The problem is ukuleles are, certainly in those days, they weren't very good. Um, the ones that you could get your hands on had either been in a, someone's attic for 50 years or hanging on someone's loo wall, as my very first ukulele was. Uh, <coughs> and I tuned it up, strung it up, put some machine heads on it, some wild, wild machine heads. And uh, it sounded terrible, and I played it for about five years with the Ukulele Orchestra of Great Britain. And then I moved on to a slightly better one um, called the Bobby Henshaw. Um, sadly, I set light to the neck slightly of that with a tea light after a couple of glasses of wine. But that's another story. Earl Grey, not wine. Um, sadly, I don't have either of those two to show you, but I do have the next one in the series, which I got in about either 2003 or 2004, and it was when the first um, manufactured ukulele for about 50, 50 odd years, I believe, um, certainly in, in the UK, and it's made by Applause, um, who make uh, ovation guitars and so it has an ovation back here plastic um, and it, it's made in the style of a tanglewood guitar and it's very pretty and I absolutely adored it it's got um, a bright red I'm oh, sorry red sort of resin ends to the machine heads um, and uh, oh, it was really nice and sadly now there's no nut there so it sounds like that so I won't play anything on it for you um, but I did love it. You can see that it's very worn away there from all my strumming. Um, I believe it's probably on the um, sleeve of both Precious Little and um, The Secret of Life, the Ukulele Orchestra album. Um, but that I played for a long, long time and uh, it did me proud. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. So that was a soprano. Um, you, and then, um, oh, actually, yes, it does have a re-entrance string. Uh, so I used to play re-entrant tuning. Then after that, in about 2006, I guess it was, I moved on to uh, a concert ukulele and I bought this, um, got it sent from America. Uh, it's a, um, a concert Bushman ukulele and um, it's got an extra long neck and it used to have a pickup in it, um, but it never really worked properly and, and in the ukulele orchestra we don't use pickups, we use um, mics. That's why we have a barrage of mics in front of us and our wonderful sound man makes us all sound good and blended. So um, yes, I had the innards removed at some point because it was just a pain um, and it was all rattling about. And when I got it back from the luthier, um, they had put this little plaque, brass plaque here over the hole in the wood where they'd taken the, the pickup out. And I used to joke for years that it, it ought to have an inscription on it, like those sort of memorial benches. Um, and eventually, uh, Richie said to me one time, oh, well, I know this guy in Ringwood who, can, who could do it for you, if you like. So I decided what I wanted on it, and I actually, Richie went off and got it done for me. I don't know if you can read it there. It says, Hester Goodman, she loves the view from here. Um, it should be she loved the view from here, really, if it was truly like a memorial bench, but I was a bit su superstitious to put put it in the past tense. So it says, Hester Goodman, she loves the view from here. And uh, during gigs, I sometimes look down and, and smile to myself, knowing that I have that little plaque there. Um, and that, I, I'm still playing this now, actually. Uh, I did rest it for a little while, and I, um... Oh, great ukulele manufacturers, Carla, um, provided me with this one, which is really lovely as well. And this is a concert cutaway here, and it has got a, a pickup in it, which does work, I think, but I don't use it. Um, so I actually have a picture of me playing this on the bus, uh, tour bus, with my 
daughter when she was just born. There you go. And uh, I believe I was playing uh, the wheels on the bus go. should have been going on to be who because she's quite a wild child um so this is a really nice punchy one and also i forgot to say um i with the concert youths i moved on to uh, a low g or a low a actually i tune a d f sharp b um it just gives it more of a punch than the re-entry tuning it's not quite as sweet, um, but it gives it that loudness and punch on stage. I guess that's that's what works with that. Um, now, what else have I got? I've got lots of novelty ukuleles um, that I've been given over the years. Uh, there was this one here. Uh, this is was given to me on the first, uh, Seth second Jap Japanese tour um, in two thousand and four. And it's a piece uke made entirely of plastic, um, and it's great, isn't it? I'm sure it used to sound nicer than that in the old days. Anyway, um, I don't play it, but it's very beautiful, and uh, I have a photo to show you here. Uh, there's a photo of us on stage with the whole audience in Tokyo, and Kitty's actually holding it there. Uh, Georgie's holding her one, which is the pink ukulele. There you go. Um, that was that tour. I should show you my ukulele memorabilia as well, shouldn't I? But I don't think we've got time for that. Um, I've got a drawer full of strings here because I realised lots of them actually have strings missing. My daughter, at some point when she was about two or three, I discovered her with a pair of scissors under the uh, table and she'd snipped um, the top string off this ukulele, which is hers. If you see, the sound hole is the map of Australia with Tasmania down at the bottom here. And it was presented to her um, in Perth, Western Australia, when we were on our, our tour there. And she was just a little baby, a few months old. And it had been made by somebody with local wood, and it's really beautiful. Um, and as I said, she cut that string off, so I'm so sorry about that. One day I will put another string on it, but it's one of those ones that you have to put a bead inside, so every time I think about it, I think I'll do that next week. Um, I'll just show you a picture of when that was presented to us. This is a lovely book of photographs that Jodie made for Kizzy's first birthday, her first year of touring. There, I don't know if you can see it. She's also got a bottle of beer for some reason, I don't remember that. Uh, what else have I got? I've got um, a Brooko uke, which was given, we were all given one of these um, on our first tour to Sweden, I think 2004, and this has no strings at all on it, no strings attached, um, so it's a very easy going ukulele this, and added bonus, you can post it through someone's letterbox, um, and they're great very very easily portable they actually sound good but obviously I can't show you because it's got no strings on it um, even though the body is quite shallow they sound lovely and they're made by Thomas Ukulele Manon in Gothenburg I believe if my memory serves me right um, I have a ukulele here I, I think Jonty showed you one of these in his um, ukulele collection it's a genius uke which all the kids ooh, Need a new light bulb in there. All the kids in um, Uku English School in, in Chongqing, uh, they all play and learn English whilst learning songs on the ukulele. So that's really, that's great. That sounds all right, doesn't sound too bad. There you go. Good enough for learning English, I would say. Um, here is one of the first very small ukes. This was made by a fan in Germany. It's very tiny and doing it's got a string <laughs> missing or broken. I must have been playing this like heck at some point. Um, and this is before the Sopraninos were, were being manufactured. And now you can buy iukes, which I, I think I have one here somewhere. Oh yes, here it is. This is, this is an iuke, which was again given, given to me 
in China um, at an expo. And this the sound hole is a little turtle. Look at that. How cute. But it is playable um, if you don't have sausage fingers. So there you go. Um, any more for any more? Uh, the, one, the most important one I have to show you is this absolute beauty here. This is a Martin tenor ukulele. Um, I think it's probably made about around the 50s, I don't know for sure, but I imagine. My dad got this in Totnes Market, I think in 1972, for £12. And he used to play it. Um, uh, we sadly lost him in November, which is uh, very sad. But now I have his ukulele, and it's really pretty. bright ringing sound um, and that's a really special ukulele. I haven't actually taken that on tour with me yet. Um, I haven't had a chance and also I'm, I don't really want to. I haven't had a, a good, I um, haven't got a strong enough case either because this is the case it comes in. Look at that. It's so old. Mmm, smells lovely and musty. And uh, it either needs properly mending or I need to get a a decent case so it won't get squashed if somebody sits on it on a train. Maybe I just won't take it out of the house. So I'm really fond of this one. Um, ah, there he is. Oh, that's a long, long time ago in the 30s sometime when he was playing a little soprano. But he always played ukulele and that's uh, how come I ended up playing ukulele when nobody else of my generation did all that time ago. Um, I don't know what else I've got to show you. Probably that will do because, well, you know, we haven't got all day, have we? <laughs> we actually probably have at the moment. Anyway, here's to you, wherever you are, happy strumming and it's been lovely sharing my ukulele collection with you. Bye bye. <laughs>